I hope you're having a good day today. We're going to be looking at the parable of the sower from the account of Mark. Our hymn today is Sowing the Seed of the Kingdom. Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother, in the morning, bright and fair? Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother, in the heat of the noonday's glare? For the harvest time is coming on, and the reaper's work will soon be done. Will your sheaves be many? Will you garner any for the gathering at the harvest home? Appreciate it, Lee. To our passage, Mark chapter 4, verse 2. Then he taught them many things by parables, and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened, as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground, where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on the good ground and yielded a crop that sprung up, sprang up, increased and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And of course, then you have the account where the disciples say, Why do you talk to them in parables? But here the Lord explains this parable. As you have the source of the word, you have the wayside, talks about, Satan, such things as that. Hopefully you're familiar with the account. And to just think about uh, a few different points, and there's any number of points we may make. One of the points we might make is the Lord wanted his disciples to have realistic expectations. Remember, uh, remember an old fellow one time at a congregation in Arkansas and he, he talked about the zeal he had as a young man, and he said that they were just going to go out and convert the world. Well, the Lord is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. But the bottom line is, when the disciples say, are there few who are saved? The answer to that is, yeah, there's only a few that are saved. And that you need to keep your expectations. Uh, you, need to, you, you need to have realistic expectations. And that the sower goes out to sow. And, and here's the thing. What farmer, you know, granted the Lord doesn't give percentages, but what farmer, if the seed salesman says, yeah, it'll, it'll germinate 25% of the time. What farmer is going to be content with that? What farmer is going to buy that seed? Seed would be very easy to give up. If the Lord says, and that's the thing, if the Lord says it will it will be fruitful one time out of a hundred. It'll be fruitful. Most most people would give up and it can be very tempting to give up. The Lord wants us to have realistic expectations. The the vast, vast majority of the time. The seed's gonna fall on the wayside, it's gonna go in one ear and out the other. Other times, people are going to be real shallow, and they'll, they'll do okay until trials come along. Other times, people will, their lives will be so full of everything under the sun that they, they won't bear any fruit. And then that remnant of time, the remnant of the people, they'll, they'll be fruitful. We have to have realistic expectations. Back to our passage. Something else we can point out is, this is how the devil works. You, you, see, the, you see the devices of the devil. Okay, so what does the devil want? Well, first off, the devil wants, there in verse 15, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Right? lest they should hear it, I believe the other accounts say. So that's the first thing. It's like, ah, we don't even want them, <laughs> we, 
we don't even want to give a, give it a chance. Right? And that's what happens when people just think you're joking or people think it's silly and it just goes in one ear and out the other. Right? The the seed the seed falls and it's quickly whoop, it's gone. And the devil's pleased. But then it, it might take a, a little root. Like, okay, if we can just keep them real shallow, then we're we're good. If we can just keep them in John 3.16, we're good. And nothing else. Right? This is what the devil tries to do. Keep them real shallow. If we can just keep them in the plan of sal the initial plan of salvation, just here, you know, so they don't grow. We don't want them to grow. That's what the devil doesn't want. Doesn't want them to grow. So just keep them real shallow. And a lot of folks are... They're content to just be shallow. And then the trials come. And then they start saying things like, why does the Lord allow suffering? And they soon wither away. But maybe they hang on, and they grow a little bit more. And then we see the next thing the devil tries to do. It's like, well, okay, they're grown, but I don't want them to be fruitful. And so you just start cramming their lives with so much stuff. The cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the expectations of other things. And it'll choke the word. And so you see, that, you see how the devil works. When it's all said and done, though, you also see the power of the seed. These are the ones sown on good ground, and those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. You might consider the idea, what is the good ground without seed? And it's, it's bare ground. You, the power is in the seed. The power is in the word. The power is in the word of God. The power is in God. This is the Lord's doing. What we are is, we're the dirt. That's that's what we are. And so we hear the word. We we receive it. We keep it. We bear fruit. And I remember the Lord is the Lord of harvest. And so that's why the hymn was chosen. Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom? And it can be tempting to quit. And it can be tempting to be real ignorant of the devil's devices. And it can be tempting to think, ah, the power's in us. The power's in the Lord. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.